What's up guys, my name is Ben Conter and I am an insurance professional here in Ontario, Canada. And I make videos about how insurance enables the lives that we live. In today's video, we're talking about my camera gear. <laughs> I started my YouTube channel back in November of 2020 and since then I've been slowly acquiring the gear that I need to be able to make these videos. Let me start off by saying that camera gear is so expensive. So if you're new to the YouTube game like I am, then you're really gonna wanna focus on your needs versus your wants. It's absolutely essential to be able to separate these two things in order to save a bit of money. I think I did a pretty good job at separating the needs and wants from the get-go with my gear, so I thought maybe this advice could help you. Also, even if you're buying entry-level camera gear, the value of this stuff can add up pretty quickly, so it's pretty important that you have some form of insurance in place in order to protect your gear. And I'm gonna talk about this later on in the video. Starting with my camera bag. So honestly, I wish I bought a camera bag way earlier than I actually did. And the reason that I didn't is I really thought that this was a want and not a need, and I turned out to be wrong. So finally, I invested in a camera bag, and the camera bag that I bought was the Low Pro Pro Tactic BP450 AW2. So this bag is probably a little bit of an overkill for what I need right now, but the more research I did, I really just felt like this bag was gonna be able to become a good investment and grow with me as it became a better filmmaker and acquired more gear. I got this bag on Amazon for a grand total of $265. Okay, moving on to my camera. If you watch any YouTube videos on what is the best camera to buy for a beginner YouTuber, the Canon M50 is a camera that comes up over and over again. So this is what I decided to buy. And honestly, I'm so glad that I bought this camera. It's nice and basic for beginners, and it's really all that I need right now. The camera also comes with a kit lens, which is something that I really wanted because I was really trying to avoid buying a lens separately, even though I did, which I'll explain in a little bit. Overall, this camera is a great camera for someone who's a beginner and it cost me a grand total of $799. Another camera that I utilize is this little GoPro. It's a little older, but it does shoot 1080p, which is perfect for all I need on YouTube. And it provides me with just a little bit of extra flexibility when I'm just trying to get a different kind of shot or different angle, like some of the shots I took while I was on my paddleboard or driving my car. Okay, moving on to lenses. So I was really, 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 really really trying not to buy a lens because the lens can be almost just as much as the cameras, if not more. And I thought I could get by with the kit lens that came with the camera, but the more I used this lens, the more I realized it was holding me back. So it was really something that I needed to fix if I wanted to keep moving and filming other videos and different kinds of settings. So I bought a lens. So thank you Think Media for having so many videos on the Canon M50 and as well as the type of lenses that will work best with it. So what I ended up getting is a Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 prime lens, and this thing is awesome. So much better than the kit lens, it's like night and day comparison. And now I just leave this lens on my camera for the majority of the time it's on right now. Um, I really rarely take it off. So that being said, I believe this lens is the perfect lens for someone who has a Canon M50, and I purchased this lens from Henry's for $569. Okay, let's move on to audio gear. So what I learned is that audio gear is just as important as the video. So I picked up the Rode Video Micro. This is a great cheap microphone. I leave it on my camera all the time. If you don't have a lab mic, this is probably your best option for leveling up your audio. I got this microphone for $83 on Amazon. Next, my lav mic, which you can see I'm wearing here today, which I absolutely love. I love lav mics. They're a surefire way to make sure that you get pretty good audio almost every single time. Okay, let's just do a little comparison so you can see the different types of audio. So right now you're hearing the audio coming out of the camera without a microphone. How's it sound? Sound good? Probably not. Okay, now hold on. Okay, now I've plugged the Rode Video Micro microphone into the camera, and this is what the audio sounds like coming from that. How's this sound? Probably a little better? Probably. Okay, now you're hearing the audio coming out of the lav mic. How does this sound? Hopefully better than the other two. I got this lav mic on Amazon for a grand total of $65. Okay, so when you're using a lav mic, you really need some sort of recorder, which is what I have here. This is the Zoom H1N, so I can just plug the lav mic into this and I'm good to go. I can be way over here and the audio still probably sounds just as good, right? That's why you need one of these recorders. I got this Zoom recorder on Amazon for $160. Now, when I want really crispy audio, I use this, the Samsung Q2U, I think that's called, as well as the Zoom H6. I use these tools for my voiceovers and it really just helps the audio sound that much better. 
These are a little bit more expensive. So the microphone runs you at $90 and the Zoom H6 will run you back about $450. All right, now for my newest purchase and probably the most exciting, that is the drone. This is my Mavic Mini. Oh! The only reason I got the Mavic Mini is because it's the only drone that legally I can fly without having a license and having to register it and all that good stuff. And this is because it's under the 249 gram weight limit. So I'm not out there trying to get the best shot ever. I just want something that provides me with a different point of view. This drone is perfect for that. I got this drone in the Fly More combo for $590 from Best Buy. All right, something that everyone needs if you're doing you know, videos like this is a tripod. And so I got a K&F tripod off of an Amazon. This cost me $120. And let me just say this. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on what might be the best tripod for someone starting out. And I saw so many YouTubers using this Peak Design tripod that's like, Hold on, it's how much? Let me let me look this up real quick. Eight hundred dollars for a tripod? Are you guys kidding me? Eight hundred dollars? I don't think anyone needs an eight hundred dollar tripod. I'm just saying, do not buy an eight hundred dollar tripod. Go to Amazon and get one for one hundred and twenty bucks. That is all you need. Needs over wants. Eight hundred dollar tripod. You know what I can do with eight hundred dollars? Not buy an eight hundred dollar tripod. Okay, next moving on to a camera strap, or this is what I like to call the poor man's gimbal. So what I do when I'm trying to just get a bit of a smoother shot is put on my camera strap and use that as a way to stabilize my camera. Works pretty good. So I bought this Peak Design camera strap off of Amazon for $89. Okay, so now we're gonna start moving on to some of the smaller stuff. And can I just say it's like really this small stuff that really starts to add up. They, they have to get to make your camera work properly but like you just can't get a camera accessory for less than $100, it seems like. I really think that there should be an investigation uh, you know, done on some of these camera companies for price gouging consumers because there's something going on here. Item number one here, we have the variable ND filter. This is from KNF Concept. This was $76, but is absolutely essential if you wanna use your camera <laughs> outside pretty much. Spare batteries, also essential. One of my biggest complaints actually about the Canon M50 is the battery is terrible, absolutely terrible. So if you're gonna go somewhere and you're not gonna be near a charger, you need more than one battery. So I bought some spare batteries off of Amazon. They're just third-party batteries that are not made by Canon. And this is because the Canon batteries are so expensive. Literally one of these Canon replacement batteries is $80 where I could get two batteries and a charger for $35 off of Amazon. Okay, memory cards. Memory cards are pretty self-explanatory, but they really start to add up because you need so many for all the recording devices that you own. So I have one for my camera. I have one for my GoPro. I have one for my recorder. I have one for my other recorder. I have one for my drone. It's like five memory cards right there. That's like 500 bucks. So if we add up all the equipment I own, we are looking at $3,892. That's a lot of money. And this is just beginner entry level camera gear. I was watching Chris Howe's video in the summertime. If you're not familiar with Chris Howe, make sure you check him out. He got his camera bag stolen and guess how much it was worth? 17 grand. Could you imagine having 17 grand worth of equipment just on your back? Okay, time to talk about the good stuff. Insurance. I have here my condo insurance policy, which is my home policy that protects the contents that I own in the unit, as well as protects me from any liability that I might be responsible for uh, as a result of owning this unit. On this policy, I have $60,000 worth of content insurance to protect everything that I own that is inside of this unit. To be honest, since making this video, I'm pretty sure $60,000 is not enough coverage. Now that I'm really thinking about everything that I've brought in here over the couple of years that I've lived here. So might have to look into that. Well, this limit would cover anything from my bed, my couch, my TV, my fridge, my stove, my clothes, my underwear. Yep, even my underwear, that would be covered. So if this condo goes up in flames tomorrow, then I would have $60,000 to take and try and replace all these things that were damaged. Some other things that I might be covered for is a break-in if someone breaks in here and tries to steal all my camera gear. Where's the camera gear? Okay, don't hurt me. It's right there. This bag, this bag right here, and that bag right there. Is that my massage gun? Don't worry about it. See you, sucker. Covered. Now, another way that I could cover my camera gear is add it as a floater onto my current policy, and this would give me $3,892 over and above that $60,000 limit that I just talked about. That's also great because then I won't have to worry about whether I'm gonna use the insurance money to buy underwear or camera gear. 
I'm sure that's happened. Come on, somewhere out there that must have happened. Floor coverage usually provides a little bit more robust coverage. For example, it usually covers your stuff anywhere in the world as opposed to just at the location of your home. If you're always traveling with your gear, then this is probably a really good option because it really just does provide you with more coverage. Until I have more expensive gear, I probably won't add it as a floater onto my policy. I'll just rely on the contents coverage that I have in place. But if this channel becomes more successful, probably gonna get some more expensive gear, then I'll probably wanna add the gear onto my policy as a floater. Maybe that's how we should start gauging YouTube success. When you finally need to take out a floater for your gear, that's when you know you've made it. So with all this being said, I would really encourage you to make sure that you're looking at the limits that you have on your insurance policy. And really think about if the stuff that you own is gonna be covered under the limits that you have in place. There's a pretty good chance that you could be underinsured um, and it's not really that difficult to increase your policy limits. So that's it guys. If you landed here because you're looking to start your own YouTube channel, I really hope that I provided some useful information. And hey, if you're gonna start investing in this stuff, make sure you have insurance. Okay, we will see you in the next one.